Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Well, it's been about a year since I built a new workbench and I've gotten a lot of questions since then as to how I like it, what I would change about it, what I might do differently, would I use the same materials. So I thought I would just take a little opportunity and uh, talk about the minor modifications that I made since building the bench, um, how it's been holding up, and uh, what I think about it after using it for a year. So one of the first things that I changed about the bench was to add this full length planing stop. Uh, when I first built the bench and left the gap between the two top boards, I would just use any piece of scrap that I had laying around, plane it to thickness and drop it in. And you can see how that works for cross grain planing as a planing stop in uh, part four of the workbench build on work holding, uh, work holding uh, devices. Um, the problem was either A, I would misplace it, B, I would use the piece of wood for something else, um, or C, you know, uh, one of my kids would grab it. Plus, since it wasn't full length, um, you know, dust and shavings would drop down between the boards and I had all kinds of a mess all over the shelf underneath the bench. So I finally broke down and did what I wanted to do right from the beginning, and that was to make a full length planing stop that drops into the slot. And this is really cool. In this position, it lays completely flush with the bench top, and what that does is allow me to have basically a one solid bench top, and it keeps all the dust and the shavings that are on the bench from falling down onto the shelf below. But by simply flipping the whole thing over, I get a full length planing stop that I can use to butt boards up against for planing across the grain. Um, and now I can plane boards up to the length of the bench, eight feet long, and have a full length planing stop. Um, and I've also got these little notches in here. They kind of serve two purposes. The first, obviously, was so that the stop, when it's flipped over, can drop over the cross bearing braces and let the stop sit flush. But it has another benefit. In this position, I can sort of use this as a small bench hook. So I can butt stock up against the stop and this slot here allows just enough clearance for a saw to pass through so I can use it as a bench hook as well. This was a really great addition. So one important change that I made was to the way that I attached the apron to the leg on the vice side of the bench and for me that's the right hand side. If you recall from uh, the episode where I built the base I believe it was the, the very first episode, when I attached the aprons to the legs, I just used some cut nails here, here, and here. I realized that that was going to be a problem the first time I used the bench vise to clamp something small. The issue is that the apron lies underneath the top boards. So what ends up happening is when you clamp something small to uh, in the bench vise, the chop of that vise pushes okay, against the top board only. And what ends up happening is the force from those screws, um, which are very, very powerful, you can really exert a lot of pressure with those wooden screws. Um, so the force from those screws and clamping that piece between the vise chop and the top board alone would pry or the apron right off of the leg assembly. So in order to solve that problem, I had to add some screws to this side. So what I did was take some uh, three or four inch cabinet screws and I put four holes into the apron here, 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 and here. And I screwed the apron to the leg on this side only, just to prevent the vise from pulling the apron board off of the bench because remember this isn't glued in order to allow expansion across this wide 12 inch board since this is a cross grain situation here with the leg and the apron. Um, and so far those four screws has pretty much taken care of the issue with the vise pulling the apron off of the bench uh, when I clamp small items. One other thing that I would probably change were I to build the bench over again would be the thickness of the top boards. Um, again, if you recall, I used a very clear piece of construction grade 2x12 for the top 
um, which works out to about an inch and a half thick. Unfortunately, that's not quite thick enough for a hold fast to grip securely. So I solved that problem when I was mounting the top in uh, part two, I believe, of the workbench build um, by gluing blocks underneath the hold fast holes. Um, the problem that I had and have been having since attaching uh, the top boards and using the bench more very frequently is that uh, the, the force of the hold fast gripping will sometimes knock the blocks off. You know, when I go to pound the hold fast in, that's a, a good jarring, um, jarring force that shears the, the block right off. And usually what ends up happening is the wood fibers end up sticking to the bottom of the board um, and the block breaks free. And in one case, I actually cracked one of the blocks in half. Um, so if I were to build this again, I would rather build the top out of full eight quarter thick boards. That would solve the problem of having to put backing blocks under the hold fast holes um, because you would no longer need to do so. Another option would be to use bigger blocks or back the top boards with a one by just like I did for the apron. That has been holding up just fine. Um, for now, I've just been gluing and screwing the blocks back on as they pop off. Hasn't been a big deal, but it is something that I would change were I to, to build the bench again. So far, I've been pretty happy with the height of the bench. It's about four inches shorter than my old bench was, but it's still about, oh, an inch and a half taller than what the experts say it should be. So you can see that my knuckle comes to about the top of the apron, which is right about the height where most experts and most recommendations for workbench height tell you to put the top of the bench. Now, while my bench is about an inch and a half taller than what the books say that it should be, um, I found it to be you know, a pretty good compromise for the work that I do. Um, it may be a little bit high for planing. There are times when I'm planing wide pieces that I do wish it was a little bit lower so that I could get over the top of it. And I did purposely leave it a little bit higher than I thought I should make it just so that I could cut it down later if I wanted to. It's much easier to cut the legs shorter on a bench of this style than it is to add length to them and make the bench taller. Um, but I have found that the bench height has been really comfortable for chopping dovetails, for um, cutting mortise and tenon joints, and for filing hand saws. So uh, I'm going to leave it where it is for now, and if planing becomes problematic in the future, I can always cut it down. When I originally built the bench, I had some questions about whether or not I thought the planing stock would hold up, making it from soft wood. Um, if you recall, I took a piece of cutoff from the legs, a piece of dug fur 4x4, and planed it down to size to make the planing stop. And there were some concerns from some viewers uh, as to whether or not the planing stop would hold up or wear out over time from constantly being moved up and down. Um, and you can see this one, is, this one still holds well with a friction fit, still requires a mallet to move it. Um, so I expect that it should be fine for a good long time. I also received several questions about finishing for the top. Um, as you can see, I left mine without any kind of finish at all. It has gotten dirty, um, but that really doesn't bother me. Um, when I do need to flatten it again, it'll clean it up a little bit. The bench does have some marks in the top from saws and chisels and um, pieces of wood being dropped on it and, and the like. Um, Again, those little dips and dings and scratches really don't bother me. Uh, as I mentioned in the design considerations episode, I would really rather the bench become damaged than the wood for the furniture that I'm working on. Um, so dirty bench, banged up bench, really doesn't bother me at all. Now when I first built the bench and when I make recommendations to other folks looking to build benches, um, and I mentioned that I'm going to be using construction lumber, um, I got a lot of feedback and a lot of questions about whether I was concerned about stability and the, the lumber moving um, and the top going out of flat and the whole bench twisting and turning into a big wreck. Um, and at the time I responded no, that I wasn't concerned in the least. Um, and I built the bench 
And as you can see, and I'll get a light, let me turn off the overhead lights and show you. If you shine this light, you can see that very little light shines underneath that straight edge there. And in reality, the top has not moved significantly since I built the bench last year. It is still just as flat today as the day it was when I first flattened it. I have not needed to flatten it since. Um, so I stand by my recommendation that as long as you buy kiln dried lumber, um, construction lumber is just fine. Uh, once it is plain flat, if it was dried properly and cut properly and you select your lumber carefully and be picky about the boards that you select, there's no reason that construction lumber can't make a good bench. This bench is just as flat as the day that I flattened it. The other thing that I often get asked about is if I regret putting the vise on the right side of the bench and the crochet on the left side being a right-handed uh, right woodworker. Uh, my answer is a, a, a resounding no. Um, in fact, I much prefer having the vise on the right-hand side um, being a right-handed woodworker. The crochet has been a great addition to the bench, allows me to edge joint material very quickly, uh, get things in and out, not have to worry about unscrewing the vise at all. Um, it's just a very quick and nice way to work. Um, the wide apron with the hold fast holes has actually made using the vise um, almost non-necessary. In fact, just as I have it now, I very frequently just have the vise completely removed from the bench. Um, the only thing I really need to use the vise for is for holding very small parts that don't secure to the apron with the hold fast very well. Um, but for bigger boards, wider boards, if I'm cutting case dovetails, um, if I'm sawing wide tenons, um, sawing a lot of stock, um, I frequently will not even have the vise attached to the bench. Um, and in fact, I probably have it off the bench more than I have it on the bench. Um, like I said, the only thing I really use it for is for planing very small pieces and, and holding very small pieces for shaping like saw handles and things like that. Um, and in fact, you probably could really do without the vise altogether um, or maybe just make a uh, detachable or separate Moxon style twin screw like uh, Chris Schwarz did for the uh, magazine a few months ago and um, it's pictured in Felien and, uh, and in Moxon's book. Um, and in fact, I could actually and do have plans to make a rear jaw for my current twin screw since it's removable and it could be used on the bench and off the bench similar to Moxon's twin screw. So um, it's an option as well and very inexpensive option. So, um, you know, after using the bench for a year, I have to say I am extremely happy with it, much more so than my last two benches, one which was made of construction lumber, one which was made of very nice, hard, heavy hardwood. Um, this has absolutely been my favorite bench so far. It's been the cheapest bench, and for $100 in lumber, I absolutely could not ask for a better bench.